to take what we're supposed to and to get rid of what we don't need and then to make it our own. And that's how I understand Jeet Kune Do. Tell me if that's how you guys understand Jeet Kune Do. Okay, so before you start thumbs down in this video or even writing me comments on how I'm crazy or you wanna come here and beat me up, please hear me out first. And then put all the comments you want because I like to hear what you guys have to say and I like to try to respond to any of the, uh, any of the comments that come in. Second, I wanna make sure you guys understand that I am a huge Bruce Lee fan. I do have, uh, a, I have three different versions of the Tao Jeet Kune Do. Here you go, you can see them right here. I also have several books and magazines and, and posters like this one right here. I have, I think, like six of these. And I am a huge Bruce Lee fan, and I have been a Bruce Lee fan since I was about five years old, as when I first saw Fist of Fury, that's what kind of got me started into the world of martial arts. So don't take this as like clickbait or me just trying to bash somebody to get a, get a view. I am not. I'm actually going to talk about something I feel is actually important. So I was in this discussion a couple weeks ago, and the discussion was on proper rank or ranking in training in Jeet Kune Do. And if somebody had a sash or a t-shirt or a patch that identified their rank, how that was wrong. And that's what today's video is going to be about. That's what today's discussion is. That's where I feel that Bruce Lee made a mistake in trying to remove ranking inside of the art of Jeet Kune Do. I do agree that Bruce Lee was innovative and definitely a rules breaker. I mean, a lot of the equipment we're using today is due to Bruce Lee and some of the things that he introduced to the world of martial arts. But I also do think that there is a difference between something in planning and something in practice. If you look right here, we have a, a design of a car, a, a drawing to say, hey, this is what this future car is going to look like. And then here you go. Here's the final product. They're not quite the same. There is some differences when it comes into planning and practice. And then if you look right here, here's a design and drawing of a house. And then you look over here and you see the finalized version of the house. Again, they're not exactly the same. So the original idea, in my understanding, and I think it's a great idea that there are no ranks because then you don't have that preconceived notion that, hey, this person is going to be better than me because they have a higher rank or they also, this person is going to be better than me because they've been here longer. Taking that out in its, in its form is great. Uh, I think this works in small settings, and I think when C. Joe Bruce first started his program, I think he had no problems when he was launching Jeet Kune Do because maybe he had a small number of people. However, when you go big, in my opinion, is where you start to have problems. Think about it like if Bruce Lee didn't die, his classes would probably be in the hundreds, if not thousands. There is no way to not have a rank structure when you're dealing with over you know, a couple hundred people. As the program grew, I think that's where it kind of got got stuck and maybe he even found problems in it himself. So if I'm a new student in the world of Jeet Do and let's just say there are no ranks, well, does that also mean there's no curriculum? If you don't have a curriculum, you don't have rank, how do you kind of know where you're at and how do you know where you're going? And from a student's perspective, sometimes that's super important to say, hey, what do I need instructor, you know, Sifu, Sijo, Sensei, professor, guru, whatever, what do I need in order to get to the next level? versus let's look at it from any other perspective. If we talk about the military, if we talk about education, we talk about any other martial arts program. So you have uh, school. You go from elementary school, you graduate, and you graduate usually like fifth grade. Then you go into middle school or junior high, and then you complete that, you graduate, and then you go into high school, and then you get a certificate, you graduate from that. Then you move on to your, your college years, your associate, your bachelor's, your master's, your doctrine. You get a different level, and each time we do that, you have different people, and they're, they're going to be saying, okay, I know you have these fundamentals. I know you have these basics. But if there was nothing, then you're just going through, and you have no way of knowing where anybody's at. You can't really gauge or, or rate or figure that out. And it's the same if you're talking about military. We all have rank. Rank is based on time and grade, time and service, and some of it is even uh, promotion or score based. So there are ways to say, hey, this person has met this minimum standard of time or minimum standard of knowledge, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, okay, this is visible or visual so someone else can see that. And martial arts, I think, are the same. From the student's perspective, I think you have to have a curriculum so they know what to expect and they know what they're shooting for. And then also for the instructor to say, okay, yes, you've completed this beginner stage. Now we're going to move you to this intermediate stage. And we're going to move you to this advanced stage. And then we're going to move you to the instructor stage. We have 
proof that there was some rank implemented at some point because you have different people. You can see right here, see Fudan and several other people are all wearing uh, a shirt that has a symbol on it. And, or maybe that's a patch, it's hard to tell from this old picture. But I know right here, we have the Jeet Kune Do rank structure. Whether it's a colored shirt, whether it's a sash, whether it's a belt, whether it's a patch, or whether it's a shirt with a certain symbol on it, there is some form of rank. And I think that became necessary as his program grew. And again, I think you can do it without if you're staying very small or if you're keeping your classes like private. From the instructor's perspective, it's the same thing. If you have a class of 40 people and you're like, all right, we're gonna teach this lesson plan and you don't have any rank whatsoever, it's gonna to be tough to remember or gauge where everybody's at. Whereas if you look at it and say, okay, hey, these people are wearing this color shirt or they have this color sash or belt or their patch is this color, I can say, hey, you guys, have all these fundamentals. You guys aren't beginners anymore. We're going to work on this type of material and, and so on and so on and so on. So I think it is important for the instructor as well as for the student in order to say, hey, here's where we're at. Then, of course, we're left with the untimely death of Cedro Bruce and how people have now decided or they've taken, you know, his teachings and his writings and his philosophies and his ideas and they've kind of turned them into it, their own religion. You can either, you know, you follow the, the Old Testament and you do stuff that only Bruce Lee did when he was alive, or you follow like, the New Testament and you follow like maybe Santo's teaching and maybe some other people that have adapted it, or maybe even some of the, the later ideas that C. Joe Bruce had. I don't think that was ever the intent. And again, if you look at the very end of the Tao Jeet Kune Do, Bruce Lee says right here, you know, if this name is what's gonna hold you back, then throw it out, because it's just a name. If you're going to add in grappling into your Jeet Kune Do, is that wrong? If you're going to add in, you know, wrestling or, or takedown defense into your Jeet Kune Do, is that wrong? I don't think so. I think Jeet Kune Do is meant to evolve. It's supposed to be an add-on unto a program or into your own training from my, from my opinion, my perspective, okay? And if rank is going to be the thing that's going to hold you back or make you, you know, tell somebody their program is good or bad, I think you're looking way too much into it. And you're saying, okay, well, this person's Jeet Kune Do isn't as good as this person's because they're using a sash or because they're using a colored shirt or because they're teaching the dummy sets or because they're teaching the forms. If the idea or the, the core essence of Jeet Kune Do is to take what is useful, discard what is useless, and to, it, to add what is uniquely your own, isn't that saying, if I feel the need to add rank to my Jeet Kune Do, I can, if I feel the need to remove the dummy sets or to remove a kata or to add the kata, it's also my decision, right? Would C. Joe Bruce have built this up and continued to add to it? Um, I'm gonna say yes. And would he have used rank? I also am gonna say yes, because if he did not pass away, I am certain between his movie fame and whatever, Jeet Kune Do classes would have gotten larger and larger and larger to where some, maybe if he had a seminar, there'd be thousands of people there, okay? And then you cannot tell me if you have a thousand people there, there's not gonna be no rank. And then people are just gonna know where everybody's at. That's just not doable. I go to a seminar every year, or two times a year with um, Professor Carlos Machado. There's usually like 300 to 400 people there. I can tell you he looks around and kind of gets a gauge of the room and says, okay, there are a lot of people in this skill set, so this is the level on which I'm gonna teach at. And then he'll come over to different groups and then he'll give additional bits and pieces. And then we even have pod training now in order to make some of this a little bit nicer, a little bit easier, where all the white belts are grouped together and they're training a certain set of techniques and the blue belts are all grouped together, the purple belts and the brown belts and the black belts. And each group is learning a different thing and again, if you don't have any rank or any way of recognizing that, just, just imagine that type of seminar and how crazy that would be. You might be there and you're like, man, this is way over my head. I don't know what's going on. Or it could be the other way and you're like, yeah, I've already done this like 15, 20 times every single year. I'm really bored and why should I keep coming? So let me close out with this. Who's right or who's wrong? In my opinion, the, the goal here is to respect everybody as a martial artist. So if somebody wants to put rank in their system, let them. It's not affecting you directly. If you are the customer, if you're the student going to that person and you're like, hey, I want to join your Jeet Kune Do class 
and you see that they have some form of rank, you're like, well, that's not how it's supposed to be, then you don't have to train there. You do have the option to say, I don't want to train this because of this reason. But I don't know if that really means you need to bash somebody or get online and be like, well, you're not doing the real thing because the real thing is constantly changing. It's constantly evolving. And it even changed for, for CEO Bruce. He, he said no rank. And then apparently he added rank, like I'm saying. Again, you can say I'm wrong. Uh, you're entitled to. You can beat me up on it online all you want. Looking at the pictures, there's rank here. And looking at this chart, there's rank here. Well, there you go. You made it to the end of the video. If you like this video, do me a favor, hit that like button. If you have a comment, please put in the comment section below. I'd be really curious to hear what you guys have to say about this topic. And finally, hit that bell icon, a ding ding, so you know that now all the new videos are coming out from myself right here at the Martial Arts Limited. I have guest instructors, Sensei Judo Josh, Sifu Ed Stahl, Sifu Ron Balicki, Professor Carlos Machado, Professor Brad Scott. I've had lots of people here, and you guys will get to see all these people and more. You guys stay safe, keep training, and I'm out.